Okay, in this video, we're going to find the critical numbers of the function, find the open intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing, and identify the relative extrema. So in this case, the first thing I want to do is talk about the domain. So the domain um, is all real numbers except for when my denominator equals zero. So when x squared equals zero. Well, if I take the square root of both sides, that means when x is equal to zero. So zero is not in the domain of this function, which means when I go to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing, um, I'm going to have zero here, but it's going to have an open circle because that number is not included on the number line. And any intervals that we have will have always have open intervals anyway, so that won't really affect the ends of my um, notation. But I do need to figure out what are the critical numbers within this number line. So I need to take the derivative. Now before I do that, I would rather rewrite this. So if I separate this into x to the fourth over x squared plus one over x squared, I would get x squared plus x to the negative two. And now I'll take the derivative. It's just a little bit easier for me to do it that way. If you wanted to do the quotient rule, you could, and you will end up with the same answer. So here I get 2x minus 2x to the negative 3, or 2x minus 2 over x cubed. And if I multiply the first function by the derivative, I'm not sure what happened to my pin here. There it is. I would have to multiply by x cubed over x cubed. So I end up with 2x to the fourth minus 2 all over x cubed. Now, when f prime of x equals 0 is when 2x to the fourth minus 2 equals 0. When f prime of x is undefined, that's when the denominator is equal to 0. But similarly, we get x equal to 0. And we already know that x is not going to be a critical number because it's not even in the domain. So we don't get any critical numbers from this um, portion here. Now from finding the derivative equal to zero, I can add two to both sides. I can divide both sides by two. And then I can take the fourth root of both sides, which will give me plus or minus one. So now in my interval, I have negative one to the left of zero and I have positive one to the right of zero. Now all real numbers are included in this number line. So it does go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So I will test this num a number here, maybe f prime of negative two. In here I'll test um, negative 0.5. In here I will test positive 0.5. And finally, in this interval, I will test positive two. So let's go find the signs of all of those. Now we do need to use the derivative to do that. So two x to the fourth minus two. Oh, I forgot to put my parentheses. Insert and close divided by x to the third. Enter, ignore the first value. So I'm going to plug in negative two. I get a negative value. So that means it's decreasing. Negative 0.5 store x. I get a positive value, which means in this interval it's increasing. Then now 0.5 store x. we get a negative value, so this interval here is decreasing. And then finally, two, we get a positive value, which means this interval is increasing. So for the intervals of increasing and decreasing, increasing would be this interval here from negative one to zero and this interval here, which would be one to infinity. For decreasing, it would be the first interval here from negative infinity to negative one, 
and then this interval here in the middle from 0 to 1. Now it wants me to go ahead and find the um, relative maximums and minimums. So around the negative 1, we are decreasing and then increasing. So this is going to be a min. It doesn't matter what's happening around 0 because 0 cannot be a maximum or, ma or minimum because it's not in the domain. Then around the 1, we are decreasing and then increasing again. So again, I have a minimum. I do not have a maximum at all. So the relative minimum occurs in two places. It occurs when the x value is negative 1 and it occurs when the x value is 1. However, I don't know what the y value is. If I plug in negative 1 here, I'm going to get a positive 1 plus 1, which is 2, over another positive 1, so I'll have 2. If I plug in positive 1, I'm going to have 1 plus 1 over 1, which is also a 2. And so this is the information that they're wanting for this problem.